Many of you have been walking around lately feeling like your shoulders are a little bit naked. I'm here to solve the problem. Bam! Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Okay. Bringing some of those Dora the Explorer vibes. Nothing makes you feel like you're in junior high again, like throwing on a double strap backpack. Oh yeah. Yeah. Today we're making a zip top backpack. You wouldn't know it from looking at it, but it's technically a convertible camera bag. But uh, stick around for the end of the video and I'll show you how that works. All right, let's get started. I spent some time drawing out the basic design of the bag and cutting the pattern out of poster board before I took it to the leather. I'm using a side of four to five ounce natural Essex leather from the famous Horween Tannery in Chicago. I'll start out by cutting any straps that I'll be needing for the bag. Since this leather is so soft, I wasn't getting very good results with the strap cutter. So instead, I just used my straight edge to finish cutting the straps. For the lash tabs, I used a custom die that I had made a couple years ago and my Craft Tool Pro clicker press from Tandy. Then I strategized the placement on my pattern pieces to get the best possible yield from my hide. I usually try to avoid scars and low grain areas of the leather. Then I traced the shapes with the scratch awl and then cut everything out using a precision knife since this leather is pretty lightweight. Because this leather is so soft, the straps would most definitely stretch out over time. So my solution was to inlay some webbing that I had laying around in between the leather. For the shoulder straps, I wanted to add a little padding. So I used some 1 8 inch foam that I got from Foam Factory and glued it in between the two pieces of leather and then later stitched it all together. I cut the foam about one inch shorter at the base to reduce bulk while sewing the cover panel over the straps, which you'll see later in the video. Right here I'm just drawing a basic outline of the shoulder straps so I know where to apply the adhesive. I'm still burning through a couple gallons of barge cement that I have laying around, but I would definitely recommend using a water-based adhesive like EcoWeld or one of my new favorites, Aqualim 315 from District Leather Supply. As always, I'll have a link in the description. Barge is extremely toxic and I always get headaches when I use it a lot, so for your health, go with the water-based stuff. And even though I'm not going to be burnishing the edges, I'm using a number zero Craft Tool Pro beveler to round things off. So I had started making some tabs that the buckles were going to sit on for the bottom end of the back straps, or the shoulder straps. And they were going to go into the bottom of the back side of the bag, but because I have a little too much curvature on the shape, um, it was going to have to be down here. And uh, after I sewed these up, I didn't really like how it was all going together. So I decided I'm just gonna make a couple basic straps that hold the buckle on, kind of like that. And uh, it's just gonna go right onto the gusset like this. So that should be a little bit more simple. Let's get it. I'm using an electric bell skyver to make some of the edges thinner. I usually do this on edges that will be rolled or on areas that will have turned seams. This step isn't really required, but if you don't have a bell skyver, you can always do this using a skiving knife. It just takes a lot longer. If you'd like to learn more about bell skyvers though, I recommend checking out Texo's SK-4. 
I'll have details down below in the description. Normally I don't have a problem rolling edges like this, but because this leather is so soft, it ended up looking pretty inconsistent. In the future, I would probably use a straight edge to help roll these long edges. For my zipper, I'm using some number five YKK continuous chain that I got from Tandy. And I cut it down to length by cutting the tape just right in between the teeth. Then I lay down a small bead of adhesive to keep things in place for stitching using one of these little two ounce squeeze bottles that I get from Amazon. And again, this white stuff is the water-based adhesive that I was talking about earlier. It works really well in these squeeze bottles and it doesn't seem to dry out in the bottle like barge tends to do. Here, I'm sewing on a pocket to the outside of the laptop divider for a little organization. It can be hard to remember, but when you're installing a zipper pull, make sure you're installing it in the same direction as the teeth. The zipper will pull much smoother that way. Installing the zipper stop can be a little tricky, but I just tap it in so the prongs go straight into the cutting mat, and then I flip it over and bend them into the center of the zipper teeth. From here, there's basically just a lot of gluing and stitching to get this bag all put together. A while ago, I ordered a bunch of woven labels that I haven't put to use yet. So whenever I get a chance, I like to include them in the design. I love the way these little details can really add to the overall appearance and professionalism of a product. Here I'm laying down another stitch right over that bottom line so that after I sew the cover on, there are two points of stitching to secure these straps. You could always add rivets as well, but with two stitches going into these, the rivets would basically just be decorative. This is the point I was referring to earlier. It's not easy for your presser foot to be walking up and down those hills, especially when they're a little bit close together. So things will look a lot more seamless and you'll get a much cleaner stitch if you can reduce as much bulk as possible. I can never have enough of these little binder clips around. I use them here to hold the gusset in place before stitching. And because this leather is so soft and forgiving, I can rely on these clips without using adhesive to keep the seams together for sewing. I'm using a Texo 2750 Pro for this project. I've mentioned this before, but a cylinder arm machine is so useful for projects like this, especially going around gusset corners and other tricky places. One of the problems I ran into with this bag was that my gusset was a bit too long. In general, I usually try and make it about one inch shorter than the perimeter of the main body panel. But even though I thought I had it right, it still ended up longer than it should have been. So I ended up with some weird bunching in a few places while I was sewing it together. Bottom line, always double check your gusset length before sewing. Then the last step is to put together the adjustable section of the shoulder strap by stitching, punching the holes, and finishing them off with a couple rivets. Then I fed the straps through the buckles and we're good to go. That's it, thank you guys for watching. So because this was a new pattern and uh, working with uh, much softer leather than I'm used to, I faced a lot of new challenges had a lot of hiccups. Don't be fooled. If you look at the bag closely, there's plenty of mistakes. But you know, that's what these videos are really about. I'm really hoping to try something new on every video and hopefully improve my skills and learn new things all across the board, which is great for you because you're right here along with me and uh, you'll be able to learn from my mistakes as well. And uh, we're in this together, you know? 
This is a little divider that uh, a friend of mine helped me sew up. It's simple. It's just big enough to fit like a camera body and a few lenses and a charger or whatever. Um, it's small. It's made out of waxed canvas and some pack cloth on top so that you can drawstring it and keep all your gear in place. Uh, but it's a great size and it's removable. That's the beautiful thing. You can put it into any bag that you're using. But I really wanted to make sure that this bag was sized right to fit this camera insert so that I can get back to carrying all my stuff together again in one bag. So that little padded insert isn't available yet, but we are planning on putting it into production soon. Um, I can't put a timeline on it yet, but just keep an eye out for it. Thank you guys so much for being here. Your support is what makes all of this happen. Because of you guys, I get to put my time into these videos and uh, it just means the world to me. Huge thanks to District Leather Supply for sponsoring this video. Go check out their website. Just incredible stuff on there. Go check out the lineup of the Palo Santo tools, all the supplies, Vinimo thread, the new DLS Mark Albert shop boots that are just beautiful. I've got a pair coming. Uh, so anyway, if you're new to the channel, welcome. So glad you're here. I'll put links to just about everything I can in the description below uh, so that you can find any of the tools, supplies, materials, whatever, anything that was used in this video. I want to help you find it, help you get it, source it. And uh, some of those links are affiliate links. So when you shop through them, it supports us. If you're going to go pick something up, use our links and it you know, means everything. All right, that's it. Thank you guys, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.